What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Adrian here from Adrian Mateo Drones. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody had a good day. And the topic today is going to be about commercial drones and drone deliveries. I've actually been doing a little bit of reading and actually following um, and listening to some people's podcasts talking about commercial you know, drones, deliveries, and business of that nature. So I want to go ahead and talk about that a little bit. I'm not an expert by any means, but I'm sure that there's a lot of folks in here that knows a little bit about it. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Today, myself, I had a good, a pretty good day today. Um, got soaking wet. The rain is, um, the rain just not laying off at all here in Florida. Um, it's been raining just about every single day here. Um, God almighty, it's so muggy, um, nasty, and just humid here in Florida. And I'm just waiting for a couple more people to go in and pop up. How you doing, New Fun Drone Productions? Hey, man, thank you so much for popping into the stream. I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Jaybird Drone, how you doing? Good evening, Captain. Let me go ahead and pop the link to the stream in here. There it is. New Fun Drone Productions, I'd love to have you in. Jaybird Drone, you know the drill, brother. You know what you need to do. I would love to have a couple of new faces here also. If you'd like to join, again, there's the link to the stream right there. Hope everybody had a good day today. Hey, Jay Burn Drone, um, has it been raining over there in Ohio? What about you, Newfound Drone Production? Has it been raining in your neck of the woods? I would appreciate that everybody will go ahead and hit that thumbs up on the stream. Thank you so much. Jess Santiago, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, boss, man. Doing pretty good, man. Just hanging in there, you know, long day at work. We made it another day. Tomorrow is Thursday. It's about to be Friday in a little bit. Got to be thankful for that. Hey, Jess Santiago, I've been watching your videos, man. You, man, you're pretty good on the FPV, sir. Pretty good, man. And again, there goes the link again right here. And we have, ladies and gentlemen, my boy. Joe, a.k.a. Jebra Drone, Rome, draw, please. Here it is. Hey, what's, what's going, going on? on, Joe? Doing okay. Hey, How's I mean, it going? Nothing much, man. Just, you know, taking it easy. Um, working hard as usual. Yeah. Got soaking wet today from work. You know, it's same old, same old, man. Work is work. Yeah. Did you, uh, you said your AC went out in the truck the other day? Yeah, on, on my work truck, it actually it did. Um, they just they won't fix it, you know, the right way. But today, they, for some reason, you know, it it's really nothing wrong with the AC unit. I guess the wiring and the connection. You know what I mean when it comes to all that. I mean, because those commercial truck, it has like a whole bunch of wires everywhere. Yeah. So for some reason, it seemed like, like a just, module or something. Exactly. It seemed like every mechanic works a little different. So one yeah. person will actually carry it one way, the other one would do it another way, and they all just get all, you know, messed up to the point that don't nobody how to undo the other guy's, you know, BS. Right. If that makes sense. I knew fine drone said that he would join, but he got people there. Hey man, I understand I knew fine drone. If you can, you can. If you can, you can. I appreciate it either way, man. It was nice here today. I didn't get to fly. Working in the garden. Okay. I, I got you, man. I understand. Got to make that garden look beautiful, look pretty. 
But um, hey, um, Joe. Um, as you can see on my topic, I've actually been um listening to a lot of people's podcast about you know um commercial drones, yeah, and drone delivery. I mean that business is actually growing a lot. I mean, like it's it's ludicrous to the point where people will actually pay some good money just to have the items delivered to them. You know what I mean? In a matter of minutes or hours. Yeah, I know. Um, like uh, Amazon was talking about using them, and even um, I heard Domino's Pizza might even start using drones to deliver pizzas. Hell, I, I've even heard rumors of um, Walmart even thinking about it. I mean, you know, those big companies, those are billion dollar companies. I mean, if they really want to lobby the government, I'm pretty sure that they will actually get, you know, everything they want to do. You know what I mean? Hey, yeah. money talk. We're not, we're not rich, but at the same time, if that does, if that was to happen, then what was it going to say about us? You know yeah, what I mean? It's going to eliminate a lot of, you know, jobs too, you know, like regular drivers for UPS and stuff. Exactly. Um, I've been hearing um, when I was doing this, uh, listen to this podcast about, um, I think the name of the podcast, let me go ahead and put it up. I don't think I'll be able to share it um, in here, but let me put it up real quick. I'll see if I can actually trying to at least give you the name of it. Of course, when you're looking for something right away, you can't freaking find it. Just hide the damn thing here. Okay, oh, right here. Let's see. Oh, come on. Anyway, um, one of the ones that I was actually listening to is Drone Radio Show by Randy Gores. Have you ever heard it before? No, I haven't. Okay. Do you, by any chance, do you have an um, iPhone or do you do Android? I use Android. Android, okay. Okay. Well, I'm sure that you could still, you know, find it anyway in the Google, uh, you know, App Store. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like the drone radio show, they were talking about it. Um, and this company that actually doing deliveries already here in the US. Like in um, I think I heard it was like in North or South Dakota, one or the other, where you know what I mean? They actually yeah. got drones actually hold like between 10 pounds all the way to 75, 100 pounds. That's pretty I mean, good. That's, and that's amazing. And not just that. The range that they were saying on, on the podcast, the range could pretty much, like, they could reach all the way to 350 miles. Are these Texas. gasoline drones? So what now? Are these uh, run by gasoline, do you know, or are they battery powered or what? They, they, they were talking about they got battery power, and they also have dual power, which is going to be battery and gas. Oh, like a hybrid. That's pretty cool. Yes. I mean, that's... How you doing? Uh, sorry about that, um, Jay Bordron. How you doing, My, uh, Margie? I'm doing pretty good. I hey, see that you're busy. Hey, whenever you're ready to pop in, the link is in the chat. You can go ahead and pop in anytime you want to, Margie. Thank you so much. Um, I do want to go ahead and acknowledge Timeless Truth. How you doing, man? I really appreciate you. Thank you for popping in. Thank and you, man. If you, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Joe. Let me ask you, do you think this will um, increase theft with the drone deliveries? You think people will be able to hack into them and, you know, see that, you know, there's packages on there and they can, you know, try to get them to land them? Man, if... <laughs> hack if into because they they're doing that remote ID now, too. They might have that. They can track the flight and everything. Of course. I mean, if you think about it, um, heck... ID theft getting so popular to it, the point like you could easily just go to the freaking gas station, pump gas, and they could steal your shit right then and there. Yeah. And it, it happens every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen I, it happen I, before. People pull up to the gas pump and they're gone in a couple minutes. And it's like, what are they doing? And they're probably trying to hack into the credit card or something. Exactly. Like I, I was actually a victim of that um, uh, about 
two or three years ago where when I went to Michigan with uh, with my uh, lady and um, we were having, you know, good time and what's not. So I used my car, you know, to pump some gas. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing, I actually went inside the store. I didn't do it in the in the pump because then the pump is where they have, you know, the little schemer or what's not. I went inside. Next thing you know, like three, four days after, I get a little pop-up from my bank saying, did you authorize a charge in Chicago? And the last time I went to Chicago, it's been so freaking low when I was doing actually over the road driving. Mm. And I was like, how? That's not possible because I just used my card in Florida. How the hell did I went to uh, from Florida 30 minutes, made it all the way to freaking, you know what I mean, Ohio? There's no yeah. way. So I actually had to, I had to cancel the card, you know what I mean, get that cancel you know, decline the charge, you know what I mean? Let them do whatever they got to do. So yeah. it was a hassle, but at least it, it, it got done. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the main thing. They, they caught it early instead of running it up. Exactly. How you doing, Chris Hope? Hey, man, thank you for popping in to the stream, sir. Again, I do have the link on the stream, Chris Hope, if you want to go ahead and pop in. I really appreciate you. And Jay Jordan, you got a little hello right there. Hey, Chris Hope, how's it going? Sorry, I'm on my phone. So if I don't, you know, get in the chat much, I'm sorry about that. Adrian, everyone trying to rip you off or what? Hello, at first the trailer. Yeah, man. I mean, but but when it comes to the card, new fine drawing, that actually happened uh like two, three years ago. The stuff about the trailer happened, you know, I mean, that happened last year. I mean, it just like people just up to no good. I mean, it's 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 insane, you know. It it just things that you know what I mean. It happens, and you hope that it doesn't happen to you. But you know what I mean. It does on a daily basis. Mm. Like sometimes I'm scared that I order something from Amazon because I'm an Amazon junkie. You know what I mean. I don't know about you. Oh but, yeah, I know how that is. <laughs> in Amazon, you could literally find any goddamn thing you want. Mm, especially at night when you're bored looking up stuff that you don't need yeah. and then all of a sudden it's at the house the next day. Exactly. Um, me personally, I used to be uh, um, what you call it, an eBay junkie mm -hmm. like back in the 80s, early 2000s, but then I got ripped off so many, so many times by people just by, you know sending me counterfeit bullshit. I said, yeah. the hell, I'm not doing this anymore. So when Amazon popped up, you know, I'm good. What's going on, E Drone? How you doing, man? Thank you for popping into the stream. Really yeah, appreciate I, it. I'm there. You damn right. That's right, brother. I sold a drone on eBay, and they killed me in fees. Ten percent fee off of the the price I sold it for, plus PayPal fee, all kinds of fees on there. So I I gave up eBay after that, and then I had to pay to ship it out and everything. Exactly, and the thing is. On eBay, it's like you could find things really cheap, but when it comes to shipping, it's like they charge you more in shipping than what the item is actually worth. Yeah. And I guess that's the money, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's yes, E Drone. I, I'm looking at it, man. I, again, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you. Michael Reynolds, thank you for popping into the stream. Thank you, sir. You're not late, I man. We literally just started probably about a good. 14 minutes ago, so you are right, man. You're good. But hey, hey, Edron, I would actually love to have you, man. Um, let me go ahead and pop again the um, link to the stream in here. I'd love to have you for at least a few minutes, Edron. Come on, talk to us, man. Pop pop in if you, if you can, if you're not busy. So how was your day today, um, Joe? It was pretty good. I'm trying to figure out what type of editing software to use for uh, some videos to upload on YouTube. What do you use? Do you use Filmora or do you use Adobe? So I'm trying to find a good one to buy for my I, uh, channel. I actually, the um, video editing that I actually use, I actually use iMovie. I'm a big Apple fan. Right. You know what I mean? I got the iPhone, I got the iPad, I got the Apple computer, and I literally just got this little... Um, Mini, iPad oh, that's mini. pretty nice. Is that yeah, what you I, used yesterday for your live stream with the no, man? I, I use my phone. Oh, okay. 
Um, but see, this one here, I actually found it yesterday um, because I work for the, um, a local garbage company, and somebody threw this one in the garbage. Looks it brand new almost. Exactly. It was dirty and it was nasty, but then I came home, cleaned the sucker up. Mm -hmm. Look at man. It looks nice. Did you have to do a reset on it, factory reset? Yeah, I already had it. Oh, yeah. That's pretty it, good. It, it, it was already factory reset. Like, I didn't have to worry about hacking nothing. It was just there. Like, whoever threw it away, just clean everything out. No password and just say, hey, whoever finds it, you know what I mean? Boom, you can have it. That was a good find. That's That looks good. And the screen yeah, looks man. good from what I can see. Yeah, man. Pedro, brother from another mother, how are you doing? Doing pretty good. I mean, let me just pop out a couple of people's stuff here. And you know, an evening. Boom, boom, boom. Good, Michael. Doing good. Thanks for asking. Yeah, man. But anyway, like I was saying, I'm Jabron Drone. Um, when it comes to that, and a matter of fact, those likes being super drone smash. Anyway, thank you, Adrian. I really appreciate you, man. Hey, um, new fan drone actually went ahead and said something about how one of his buddies, Mini, got stolen. Hey, new fan drone, let us know how did that happen, man. If if you don't mind, I mean, let us know how the hell did your friend Mavic Mini got stolen? How did yeah, does that Mini have remote ID? I can't remember. It, I guess it does because they use the same app as the Mavic Air too. I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it, I think it does. But don't quote me in that. You know what I mean? I'm still. Yeah, I think it does. I wonder if they used that app or found out a way to hack it. Who knows? I don't get it, man. I turned mine off on that Mavic Air too. You know, um, I've never had any issues with any of my drones flying away or, you know, mm -hmm. or anything like that. I hope it doesn't happen um, because if it happened, man, I would really be pissed. I oh, would yeah. be pissed the hell off because, again, I got six and I got another one on the way. Uh, that's my Femi, by the way. Talking about the Femi. Can you I see Bill got his today? Who? Uh, Bill, the uh, drone reviewer, he got his today, but it, the box was all banged up. Yeah, and that's what I'm afraid of because everybody that that received theirs, the box is all like, like it just been thrown like a freaking frisbee across the room, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, so, it was all uh, taped up and everything. I like, went through the war. I guess through customs, they just search it and don't care. Like they just don't care, you know what I mean? PC guy had one too, and his uh, joystick was snapped. He had to put the old uh, controller, take it apart, and put the uh, the new joystick in. Yeah, yeah, I I, I, don't, I did see QC do that. He actually took from his remote of the 2018, and he put the mm -hmm. little pin for the little joystick into the 2020. Got it to work. He, he that was pretty good the way he did it. Yeah. I don't think he'll be able to do nothing like that. But anyway, here is the story that um here it is. He said we were okay. I, I'll let you read it. Oh well. Uh... Now I'm wondering, new fine drone, were you guys able to hit that find my drone? And it would take take you, you know what I mean, to where it was, or you guys just say the hell with it. Because I would have probably done that. I would have probably called the police right then and there. You know what I mean? I reported it because at the end of the yeah. day, that's a freaking, you know, that's a little aircraft. So mm -hmm. anyway, yeah, four hundred bucks. I would have called the cops too, just exactly. to make a report at least. At least here in Florida, anything, uh, anything three hundred or above is a felony. Yeah. You know, I don't know about every because every state is a little different. But anyway, yeah, I think Ohio is the same here too. I we do have a question from Rocket White. How you doing, man? Thank you for popping into the stream. And you do have uh, Zeno, if I'm not mistaken. So go ahead with your question, uh, Rocket White. We wait, waiting for you. Hey, 
Hey, thank you for popping in, E Drone. I really appreciate you, man. Have a good night, boss man. And um, he said we tried it and called the police. Okay, so what happened? So you guys just did a report, and then what? That that is getting kind of scary, um, Jebron Drone, because um, I get the remote ID BS. That's another thing, you know. Yeah. That is is a subject. It's like, you know, it's now I'm flying, you know, I'm doing what I want to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Next, you know, you got a couple of knuckleheads coming towards you when I mess with you. And then, so what do you do? The, you can't just shoot them like a fly. You know what I mean? Like, hey, mm -hmm. leave me alone. You know what I mean? Yeah, because uh, you're trying to watch the drone too and then your surroundings. Exactly. Because, I mean, it, it could be a good confrontation where they just know. They just want to know about drones, you know what I mean? What yeah. you fly, they want to be friendly or whatever. But what if they want to come and, you know, try to rob you of your drone and everything that you have? Yeah, that's true. I don't know if I'd give it up, though. I think I'd probably try to square up with them. I mean, <laughs> that, and it could, it could get ugly either in your side or, or their side. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's one thing that actually scares the hell out of me, man. How you doing, Brian Mack? Hey, man, thank you for popping into the stream. Hey, Brian, I do have the link in the chat if you want to go ahead and pop in. I really appreciate you, sir. We have yeah. a lot to talk about. I think that oh, yeah. uh, remote ID should be for just like law enforcement or somebody, you know, for emergencies, not necessarily yeah. the yeah. general public. Because, yeah. I mean, like with the DJI Mavic Air 2, the AirSense, mm. I, I I like that. I honestly, I'm a big fan of that. Like that, John will let me know there was a aircraft. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like, I like that. That's cool. I I wish they will actually do a update to where it will actually show you, or at least tell you what kind of airplane it is, and where it's located. That way, you could either go left, right, up, down, and you know what I mean, and avoid any issues. Like now, it only gives you a little pop up that you know what I mean. If you're near. But that's it. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping with uh, some updates down the road, they'll have, you know, more of a description on the aircraft, how close it is. I'm hoping. Oh, uh, there's that asshole there that they got on here before. Yeah. The, yeah. The little jackass that went ahead and called himself the goat. Looks like a goat. Yeah, exactly. Damn it. Hey, John Worship, a.k.a. the goat. You freaking prick, you wanker. Go ahead and pop into the stream if you want to. I really appreciate you. And here goes the question, uh, Jay Bird Drone. Let's help Rocket White. Oh, well, he's probably got on photo mode. He's got to hit the photo button and change it over to the record button on the camera. And then he should be able to adjust the, um, you know, the video shooting quality. From that point, you actually took the word out of my mouth. I was just about to tell him that too. That's exactly what you have to do. Hey, timeless truth. Thank you for popping into the stream. I really appreciate you. Good night to you too. Thank you so much. Hey, Dino, go ahead and pop in, sir. Brian Mack, we're still waiting for you, boss man. Sorry, I shouldn't have cussed on your show. My bad. All right, man. You're all right. Hope everyone in chat smash the like button on your way in. Hey, man, thank you, Michael Reynolds. Appreciate you, sir. That's amazing, man. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jim, go ahead, sir. I was just going to say, you get around a lot. I see you on a lot of these uh, shows. I'm always, you know, I think you were on, who was that last night that you were on with Marcus, weren't you? Yeah, that that's um, Marcus Crawford. That's um, Jim, Jim Boy Channel. Um, yeah, where's he at tonight? He's usually on here, too. I know. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know where he at. We got Brian Mack in the background. I'm about to go ahead and bring him in. The man. I hope that um, that uh, Jim gets a uh, police report on his drone. No, that was terrible what they did to him on that Matrice. And you, and you know what, Jeff, I'm doing? I didn't even really get to ask him about that. I guess I need to go back in the, the video and watch the whole stream. But mm -hmm. since you were there, you know what I mean? Because I believe I was not there when he was talking about it. What exactly 
because I'm waiting for him to pop in. That way he'll tell me. But what exactly happened? Uh, it looked like he uh, sent it in for repair. I don't know if it was a dealer he sent it to. I yeah. think it was. it was. But they gave him another, it looked like a refurbished drone. It wasn't the same one. It was all damaged and scratched up. And it just looked like they took the sticker off of his mm -hmm. and put it on a different drone. Because his was immaculate from the pictures he showed when he sent it in. And it was clearly a different one when he got it back. I don't even know if the one he got back works. Did he say that, B Mac? No, he, did, he didn't even get that one back yet. They're still, he hadn't agreed to the charges, so it's still in limbo. Oh, yeah. he's, in a, he's between a rock and a hard place right now with that. Because they want three grand. If I'm not mistaken, um, Brian Mac, that drone is expensive. Yeah, I mean, you know, depending on what you put on them, they, they're around five to ten grand, some of them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because that that drone is like I've seen him. I've never flew one, but I've seen it up close and personal. And them things are big. But mm -hmm. man, hey Joe, they are amazing when it comes to that camera. You know what I mean? That picture, the videos. Yeah, I, they're real nice. I think um, they use that for search and rescue too. Those drones. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, Brian Mac, that drone comes equipped with two remotes because one will actually fly and the yep. other one will control the camera, right? Yep. Okay. Um, the cameras are swappable too. You don't have, you're not limited to just one camera. Jim said he's got four or five different cameras for that thing. And if I'm not mistaken, you could also put the camera with like the heat detection cameras and all yep. that good stuff Thermal. on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am. I'm sitting here editing all that video I took this morning, Adrian, on that live stream I did. It, it, I gave you a little shout out on the stream, but then I, 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 I can't see those, man. I got I got my buddy sitting next to me, and he's on his cell phone, and he's seeing them, and he's telling me, but I can't reply back because I'm not even seeing those things on the chat. Okay, got you, got you. So, what's going yeah, on? At least this one went out. Sorry about it for the whole time, though. What's going on, SK site video? How you doing, man? Thank you for popping into the stream. Really appreciate you. Thank you, sir. But yeah. Hey, uh, sorry, go Adrian. Go ahead, Joe. I was just going to ask B Mac. You said that you use Filmora 9 for your video editing? Most of the time, yeah. Either that or Movavi. I'm fixing again to get into Premiere Pro. But I'm having, you know, I'm, I don't know. I just, I'm having second thoughts, not because of the price, but just, you know, I've been talking to Jim and, and a bunch of others, and there's, there's a bit of a learning curve there. And I don't know if I want to, I mean, I just like to get them out quick and easy. If I was doing movies, I mean, drone video is good enough on its own. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't need a lot of hype with it. I mean, some special effects or, whatever are fine. But I mean, for the most part, you don't need a whole bunch of stuff for drone video. Right. But yeah, yeah. Filmora, man, is it just, I'm, in fact, I'm playing with it right now. I just it. want something where I can set up an intro to my videos with my logo <laughs> and stuff. Can you do that on Filmora? I've got about 20 of them right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's you can put a watermark on it too. I haven't done a watermark yet. I, you know, I don't know when I get near, a thousand subs and maybe I'll go to the trouble. Yeah. I'm not worried about that right now. Okay. The thing is, um, Brian Mack is that a lot of people, and again, no disrespect towards you. I'm just going to make a general comment. Some people actually say, oh, I use this one. It's so easy to use. It may be easy to you because you're used to it, but when it comes to me, I don't know what to do. Like I'm still learning when it comes to iMovie. People tell me iMovie is simple. Man, I've been scratching my freaking head to try to figure out how, how to do stuff, and I'm just not getting it. Same here with iMovie. I know I've, I've, it's not the easiest thing. I mean, I've done some stuff with it, but it ain't that. It's not that easy. For one thing, you can't bring other stuff into it all that easily. Maybe that's, on a Mac you could, right. but not on an iPad. Exactly. I just want to say hi to um Mike Kenny. Thank you for popping into the stream. Hey, Jim's Mike. Thank you for popping in. Hey, Jim, I, uh, Kenny, I do have, again, the link in the chat. If you want to yeah, go to my there too. And by the way, Jay Drone, guess, read this. 
Rocket White, look what he said. Okay, I guess it worked for him. Did he try it or he just said? Uh, 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 he's saying thank you, so I'm assuming that, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. That's exactly, hey, it, hey, man, it was our pleasure to help you out, Rocket White. You hey, uh, Adrian, have you been out flying your Xeno Pro since the, the initial flight? No, man, because it's been raining. I'm actually shocked that yesterday I was able to fly my Mavic Air, and as soon as I flew it on my way home, started storming right away. Mm. Yeah, you've been yeah. getting a lot of rain, I guess, the past month, haven't you, in Florida? Every single All day. All these storms, tropical You're storms. You're getting a good chunk of that storm that just came up, though, Adrian, aren't you? That exactly. hurricane? We still get any light right now. It's yeah. dark. I hear the the rain just you know smacking my windows right now a little bit. I mean, it's terrible. It's every day, every day, every day. Um, something though you you mentioned a second ago about uh, iMovie, um, coast to coast drones was doing a live stream a few minutes ago, and I get tired of that. Uh, Ron Lockwood was on there, and he's talking about Luminar Four, which I've got it. I downloaded it two weeks ago, and First thing I did was, well, okay, how does this work? So I read some of the instructions, and basically it says, well, it's intuitive. I said, oh, God. <laughs> so that yeah. more or less, they're telling you, like, you have to figure this out yourself and play with it. Exactly. Which, but it's, it, it's fun. You know, it's, it is. It's a good program. I love it. I mean, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm not knocking. I mean, I'm sure that it is. The thing is that um, Brian Mack is like, I'm good. When it comes to what, I, what, how can I say, hands-on training? You know what I mean. Like if he, if he showed me how to do, do it once, I get it. But when it comes to like, because when it comes to like, for example, iMovie, which is what I use, I'm gonna reference to what I'm used to. A lot of people have videos. Oh, I'll show you how to do it this way. But then you watch somebody else, they show you how to do the same thing, but a little different. So yep. now, you know, now you're confused. Like, wait a minute, should I do it this way or should I do it the other way? I, I, I'm pretty much like Joe. Like, I want to be able to learn how to make my own little logo and like, like do like a little animation in the background. You know yep. what I mean? Like, Michael Crawford do um, shoot um, QC does like uh, uh, what you call it? Ken Herring. Like, there's a lot of people that do some amazing. You know what I mean? Little oh, intro yeah. before they play the video. You know, and the other thing too is when it comes to the photography side of drones, I never really cared much about it, but there's a guy here in Houston. He's got a Mavic two pro. Mm -hmm. He's fairly new at it. And this guy is good. I mean, he knows how to use a lot of the tricks to make those photos pop. And I haven't met him yet. I'm supposed to meet him tomorrow night, him and his wife. So, yeah, I mean, he's kind of the one that pushed me towards first. I had Lightroom, and that was kind of fun, but it's kind of bulky and it's, it gets expensive. I don't like paying that monthly thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, that's why I went to Luminar. But Luminar, <laughs> Luminar is a hoot, man. <laughs> I've been playing playing with everybody's minds on Facebook. I put up a picture from my house looking south towards downtown Houston, and I showed like a sunset. It was one of the very first photos I took with my Spark years ago, and then I switched it with Luminar and I put in a nighttime shot of the Milky Way galaxy, and I said. Same photo, same location, same shot eight hours later. And everybody thought, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's Luminar. <laughs> I'll, I'll be right back, fellas. Just keep going. I got to turn my, right, man. my light on. I'll be right back. Give me a second. What's going on, Jaybird? Oh, not a whole lot. It rained today. I couldn't go out and fly much. I try to get out at least, you know, three or four times a week when I can. How about you? I'm lucky if I can get out two or three times a week lately. I don't know. What, and it's not the weather. It's just I've got so many other commitments all of a sudden, and I'm retired. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. It's getting to be like uh, I'm working now more for no money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is that because of the COVID-19, I guess? No, just a bunch or of just... other stuff. I've gotten, unfortunately, I've gotten involved in some of the neighborhood stuff here. Okay. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, but it pays. It pays a little bit anyway. Yeah, that's good. But yeah, now they want more of your time than they let on when they first sign you up for this stuff. Mm-hmm. 
I got out today and I'm, I was glad for that. I got to get out at least one time a week where I go somewhere. You know, like until this morning I went downtown Houston. A lot of times I like to go to the coast because it's always scenic there. Yeah, that's what I like to do. I like to go out and fly in different areas, you know, just to get different footage for my channel. I usually try to go downtown or something. I actually love that um that shot when you were like in the big old field uh flying the Xeno two. Mm -hmm. Um man, that's a big old field like that. That thing looks nice for you to just go crazy and just go nuts. Yeah, I did a range test at that. Um it's a dog park. I did a range test. So you can fly out three or four miles on that. You know, because it's all open straight ahead. You got some houses, but not many once you get out about two miles. Okay. Now, I've been looking at the Xeno 2 because obviously mm -hmm. the Xeno 2 is a newer version than the Xeno Pro, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Um, um, now, a couple of questions because the Xeno 1 and the Pro do not have any sensors, period. But if I read it correctly, the Hobson Zeno 2 have sensors on the bottom? Uh, it has an optical flow sensor. Okay. So does that mean that that will actually help you with precise landing? Um, it hasn't helped me much. I mean, I'll get within a foot of the landing pad. What is supposed but, to? Yeah, it's supposed to. But they still use the camera, though, to detect the uh, landing pad. I know. So because you have I to just like the Zeno Pro does. Correct, because I remember on your video, I actually saw when the, the gimbal was coming down, how it started detecting the pad. Like mm -hmm. it would be on the screen, knowing something about the pad, but it still did not land on the pad. It landed away from the pad. Yeah, I've tried everything. I've tried to, because I figured maybe the sun was washing out the pad to detect it. So I would try to fly, you know, later on in the day and even adjust the camera settings to see if that would help. And I still can't get it. But the Mavic Air 2, that thing lands right on precise, precisely right on the pad every time. Oh, yeah. I have to go ahead and do I have to go ahead and do some precise precision landing myself because of, on my range set that I did with my Mavic Air 2. For some reason, that thing landed like five feet away from me. And I think I'm the one at fault for that because I believe when I took off, I did not give it enough time. You know what I mean? To adjust yeah, to mm -hmm. the ground of it. I just literally came up one second, boom, took off and you know, started flying. Now, somebody did a uh, calibration test. You can go on the DJI website. I think it was Gorilla Man. He did that. Um, through the website and he was able to recalibrate it. If you're still having issues with the precision landing, you can actually recalibrate it. I didn't know that. Okay. It's not know. that easy though. It takes a yeah, while. It's not. It looked like it was technical because you got to angle it a certain way. Yeah. I've been mine twice. And another question, um, Joe, we have Walter Bryan. Hey man, thank you for popping into the stream. Really appreciate you. Hey guys, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up on the stream. I really appreciate you. Question, um, Jaybird Drone. Yes. Uh, also on the um, Hobson Zeno 2, it's white, but right on the head, it, like it has uh, like a black plastic. Is that forward sensors? No, it's just decoration. Oh, bullshit. I could have yeah, that's it. it. Yeah, I thought it was a sensor too when I first saw it. I was like, damn, this is nice for a Hobson. But it, it's thought. all decoration. It's no sensor. I mean, they might come out with one where you can upgrade it and take out that little bar. But right now, it's just decoration. And we got a question from Walter Bryan, um, J. Brown, and he's asking. Oh, I've never had that problem where it flips over. Me either. Um, what the yeah, hell? I haven't had that. It might be something to do with is he taking off on a hill or anything or just regular flatland? I mean, I'm assuming that he taking off on flat land, but hey, Walter Bryan, let us know are you taking off on a um, flat level? I mean, are you on a hill? I mean, uh, 
what are you doing? Because I mean, I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of any, any um, drone flipping over after you hit return to home. That, I had a Holy Stone do that once before, but those are a hundred dollar drones. Those yeah, are I mean, cheapies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like that word cheapies. Never heard that one before. That's what but I anyway, started on, man. They're, they're, they got their spot. I you mean, started got, out with Holy Stone? Oh, yeah. The HS 700? Uh, no, it was way cheap. It was a 130. Oh, okay. I had one, one of those. Those aren't bad. I one with broken props, and I heard about their customer service, so I had another one like a week later. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it only took me about another two weeks to lose one of those. Yeah, they're they're big about you know their uh, reviews. If you leave them a bad review, they'll they'll answer you right away. Well, That's a good I, thing. I didn't leave them a bad review. I mean, it is what it is. I didn't expect you know that much yeah. from it. Right. Um. So um, Brian Max, since you after hey, look who just popped in to the stream, Mister Matt North from Northeast Drone Production. Oh no. Here is the link to the chat. I need you to bring your ass in here, man. Come oh, talk about it. Hank. <laughs> All right. Um, question. Um, Brian Max, since you actually a little more seasoned than us. I don't think so. Um, well, I don't mean that you're that old. I'm just in a little season. Oh, no, I'm old. I'm proud of that. <laughs> Compared to me and, you know, Joe. Um, I don't know if you've been actually listening about, like, the title that I have on this stream, Commercial Drones and Drone Deliveries. Have you been listening to anything about that? Because, again, I've been listening to a lot of uh, radio, talk shows, podcasts, news yeah i even went ahead and um did like some google alerts about drones and that drone delivery and drone commercial type of stuff is taking off big time and it's happening right now to with stuff actually being delivered to you pretty much the same day you order it you order it i was gonna say that that would probably be the only thing that would get me back into the job market you know i'd consider that you know, being a, a drone, you know, and the other thing, too, I'd have to know what the liabilities are. Because if they bring you on as a contractor, uh -uh, no. <laughs> you know, their drone, their rules, that's fine. But, you know, they, if they do something like, well, here's our drone, and these are going to be your routes, and be ready, you know. Uh-uh. No. They're going to have to change the rules, too, on that, the line of sight with the regular, uh, you know, consumer that, drones. I guess they'll have their own guidelines for yeah, commercial. That, that's going to get done. You know, and there's, I've heard of so many different ways they're going to set that up. They're going to have uh, point contacts to where when you send a drone out, say, whatever it's supposed to be delivered to, well, 20 miles. There's not many drones that can really practically go 20 miles. So you're going to have contact points in between that where you land your drone at this contact point and another pilot picks it up. You know, I've heard all kinds right. of scenarios where that, how that's going to work, but I want to see it work first. Too. That's another thing. No yeah. problem. Matt. If you actually have to go into work, I appreciate you, mate. Um, hey man, if you got to get ready to, for work, I'll talk to you later. I will see you Friday on your stream. Thank you for just popping in, man. I really appreciate you. And Hey, um, Matt. Joe, this is actually what Walter Bryan just replied back about the Zeno. Yeah, I've never had that problem. Uh, he might need to try a horizontal calibration. It might help. I don't know. I've never had that problem. He's probably going to have to go ahead and just calibrate everything, uh, including mm -hmm. the IMU or, you know, the gyrocopter, all that good stuff. He's probably going to have to calibrate everything all over again. Yeah, I think that pro doesn't it ask you to calibrate every time when you fly yours? You... Not not every time, but when it does, I do it. And even if it doesn't ask me, I do it anyway, just for the hell of it. Yeah. I'm sorry you're having that issue, Walter Bryan. Um, maybe go ahead and update. You know what I mean? Your um, 
your uh, what you call it, your compass, the IMU, just calibrate everything, man. And hopefully, you know what I mean, it will take care of that, that problem because I don't see why it will actually come back just fine and then it will take off to the right and then just flip. Like it literally seemed like somebody actually, you know what I mean, controlling it and just kind of, you know, taking over. But wow. I mean, how would it flip? Like, I'm thinking flip, it will, you know what I mean? Line on his, you know what I mean? On his back and just yeah. you know, on the ground. I'm thinking gyroscope issue too. I mean, I almost sound, you know, because I'm picturing my mind, okay, what keeps the drone steady? It's a gyroscope. It's a gyro, or yeah. And if one of those has gone bad or faulty, or it's not talking to the main board right, that would cause that. That could be a problem. Um, maybe go ahead and try the suggestion, uh, Walter Bryan, and hopefully it will help you out. If not, you might have to get in contact with Hobson and you know talk to them about it. Right. Might have to do a firmware update too with the computer yeah. on that one. Yeah, go ahead and look up any on uh, the forums about the update and go ahead and get it done. Um, we have my boy here. He said that he's about to go ahead and go. I'll talk to you later, Sky Side Video. Thank you for popping into the stream. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. And I want to welcome Robert Glazier. Hey, man. Thank you for popping into the show, sir. Really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, actually, I seen, I talked to him, I think it was Friday, um, Joe, Robert Glazier. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he subscribed to my channel that same night. I've never talked to him before, so I subscribed right back and Hey, man, he's been a good subscriber, you know what I mean, since then. Yeah, Thank that's you. good. Thank you. I really appreciate you, man. So, um, Brian Mack, again, um, when it, going back to the drone deliveries, um, like I was telling I'm Joe that I was listening to this podcast, and some of the drones, they got a range of over between 50 to 350 miles from takeoff point. Like that can literally reach from where I'm at all the way to Miami, pretty much. And okay. Miami, have an yeah, hour. I mean, you know, I remember when I was at Spin Up last year, some guy came in and demonstrated a, a drone that had like a 25 mile range and the battery pack, the battery was as big as a car battery. And I'm sure it was just as heavy. And it that, it just boggles my mind. It could hold 20 pounds, too, or yeah. cargo of yeah. 20 pounds. But my whole thing is, when it comes to that kind of stuff, there's no network in place. Once you get past visual line of sight, you know, if you're still, still being held to the parameters that the FAA sets up, even if they give you a little leeway, uh, say to a thousand feet, you're going to go through all kind of different class air, you know, class yeah. air spaces, A, B, to name a few. I mean, it, you, you know, I just don't understand how it's going to work. You know, there's so many unknowns. I mean, there's that. Okay. So you got a drone that can go 30 or 40, 50 miles. So you're going to pilot that thing the whole way. You've got a signal that's never going to break up. Uh-uh. Ain't going to happen. You know, yeah, I, I keep it under 400, too, probably with those. I don't know. To avoid the to, other. Go back to the Reaper drones that the military uses. Number one, they're gas-powered. Number two, they have sensors all the way around, you know, radar at both ends. They can, they can see anything coming from miles away at them. Uh, when they get close to something, they will give you a warning of how close they are to something in feet or miles, depending on how far it is. That kind of technology is is so, I mean, unless things have changed so far beyond what I know, I mean, that kind of technology commercial-wise, I don't know where that's coming from. I just Thank don't get it. I haven't seen anything like that yet. Thank you, Aisha. I appreciate you popping into the stream. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, you're right, um, Brian Mack, but at the same time, you know, those big companies do have a way to lobby Politicians, you know what I mean, and get their way around to do whatever they want to do. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, because like, at the end, like Joe's doing right now, money talks. If they really want to get it done, they will find a way to freaking do it. Because at the end of the day, those damn politicians do not want to screw up their votes, so they go going to do whatever mm -hmm. they got to do. Well, and the other thing too, you know, 
what you're doing is okay right now there's a, a small percentage of jobs that you're going to eliminate and i've seen this graphic map of what drone delivery is going to be like in 10 years from now and it just literally spider webs this country and this whole world how they're going to keep down on collisions is another qu question i don't even want to go into but to have that many drones Okay, one good thing, I guess, there won't be as many FedEx UPS trucks on the road <laughs> and, and the drivers to go with them. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. But, uh, I mean, you know, if you've got a drone that can have a, a payload of even 20 pounds, think about it. You can do 20 or 30 deliveries. Yes, know? easy. No problem. Easily. Easily. Uh, it's just... Like I said, if that's why I'm, I've got my license, you know, and I'm going to maintain it because if the opportunity comes up, I would probably be interested in doing that for a living again. And I say that, but, you know, I can't commit to it because, man, I'll tell you what, I've been retired for two years. I hate being on anybody else's schedule, man. I hate you, man. I hate you. I hate you. It's, it's like, oh, really? I got to be there when? Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Hey, Walter Brian, I'm glad that we were able to help you out. I and mean, I hope that whatever you have to do, it actually helps. Um, it helps you out to get your drone flying normal. Um, go ahead and get it done. I mean, and please come back in. You know, we don't let me know how that it going. Hey, Amen. Thank you also for subscribing to the channel as well. I Man, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And we have, let's see here. You know, Thank Matt, you. Matt, Matt, Matt put in the, the most of the flight would be automated. And that's true too. They're gonna, definitely gonna have to have some automation in there. But at the same time, when you have, let's just say 30,000 deliveries in an, in an urban area, and I'm not talking even suburban, but urban to suburban and everything is automated. Yeah, tell me how that's gonna work and nobody's gonna get hit on the head by one of these things coming out of the sky. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That was another thing they were actually Discussing Brian Mack on the um, on the podcast is is what if a uh, stupid knucklehead, you know, they they land to drive the goods, you know what I mean? And the next, you know, somebody will go ahead and grab it, or even hit it, or even shoot it. Then what do you do? Because you're not there physically, and it's not no. like you, it's not like you're gonna have another person just waiting for you right there for you to make the delivery, then take off and go ahead and let you know, hey, you That's know, right. you go ahead and go. That's not gonna happen. Because once no. you're the pilot, all you do is just, it's kind of like drop and hook. You get, you hook to the, the delivery, you drop it, you take off. But what if there's a kid? Because they were talking about what if there's a kid being nosy, get close to the props and get hurt? Because I don't know about mm -hmm. you, but those props, I've been hurt by one of them goddamn props, and that shit hurts. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've gotten cut by them damn props. That thing spinning at that revolution so damn fast, that hurts. It really does. Um, did you read what uh, Matt said, uh, Brian Mack? Uh, yeah, that's that's what I was bringing up. Okay, 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 gotcha. Yeah. I want to go ahead and thank uh, the joining veteran for popping into the stream. Hey, man, I'm doing all right, sir. How you doing, boss, man? I hope that everything is doing all right for you and the family. Thank you for popping into the stream. Uh, the joining veteran, um, I would love to have you on the channel. Come talk to us a little bit if you can, sir. Here is the link to the stream right there. And Brian, oh, Adrian. yes. Sorry, uh, I was just saying, have you gotten any updates on your tracking for the X8 this week? I got one, but the one I got is on the, uh, I got it on the fifth. Okay, so just it's say, probably still on the boat somewhere in China. Just saying that it was shipped to me. Here's your little confirmation of what's not thank you aisha i really appreciate you thank you for popping into the stream thank you so much yeah okay, you and should be getting here soon then since everybody else has been you know nerves the past yeah, couple of days they told me uh and a matter of fact they actually replied back to me because um i sent them a message you know what i mean because they're talking mm -hmm. about it may take x amount of day because of the pandemic or what's not and i literally told them i mean you know <laughs> I really don't give a damn about the pandemic. Just send me the drone. You know what I mean? Pretty much, yeah. 
Yeah, like I understand everything that's going on, but I don't see how it will take a month or even three months for you to receive. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's a little too much. So, but anyway, this now they told me that it's going to take between 15 to 30 days from the day the ship to tell me which was the fifth. So mm -hmm. I would assume that it will probably be here by next week or maybe the following week. Something yeah. like that. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah, hopefully. That's a Zeno too. It took me about two months to get mine. But did you order it through Banggood? Uh, Gearbest. Gearbest. Okay, well that's who I. It's just the same all. But see, the thing is, is that Banggood was actually dicking me around, Jay Bird, and they really mm. pissed me off. They really did. They always offer you points, but those points, who wants to use those? You had a thousand points. What's that? A dollar or something? Say that again. They always offer you points for the inconvenience, yeah, yeah, yeah. but a thousand yeah. points, what's it, a dollar it equates to or something? Exactly. That's what they try to do. I, I even told them, I say, hey, man, I don't want I don't want your points. I never yeah. ask for anything for free. I pay for my goods. I don't need nothing for free. I just want you to honor what you said because when I made the order, it said that it was in stock. Mm -hmm. I say out of stock. Well, you know, sometimes... The system is not updated. I said, I don't care. I don't work for you. You work there. Yeah, you know I think I mean? a lot of times they do is pre-orders. They, they get so many, but they want to yeah. still take the money to get interest off of it. There you go. And exactly. then eventually, you know, if somebody cancels, they're still getting somebody else doing the pre-order. So, so they're getting I, money off of it. I just said the hell with it. I canceled it. I think I went to cancel it was June 1st. That mm -hmm. same night, I went ahead and went through Gearbest. I made my order. You know what I mean? I'm boom. Like what? Three days after, boom, it was sent to me. Yeah, that's good. I hope you get it soon, then. Keep me posted. Yeah, man. I'll see you later, Matt. Um, drive safe, man. Have a good day at work, sir. Um, Jordan Veteran, I guess your house is a little loud right now. You won't be able to pop in. Hey, man, hopefully you'll be able to do it next time, Jordan Veteran. Yeah, right now, things are starting to open up, though. Yeah, they are, slowly but surely. Chris Hope, still waiting on you, man. If you can, go ahead and pop in, brother. Jordan Vedder, hey, Adrian, I got I to gotta get off anyway, man. My wife's going to kick my ass three hours last night and another hour tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah we, we don't want you to sleep on the couch, Brian Mac. We it's don't. Still going over, big. <laughs> See you later, Brian. Hey, man. See you later, man. Bye -bye Thank now. you for coming in, sir. And we got my boy, Jim Cronin. How you doing, Chief? Hey, Adrian. How you doing, man? Not bad. So what are we talking about tonight? Commercial drones and drone delivery. Oh, cool. Yeah, and then I've been hearing a lot of stuff about it, um, Jim, and um. It's a business that's actually taking off, man. I mean, a lot of money involved because, like, right now, even with the stuff about the coronavirus, that you know, COVID, or even with the military, like things are actually being delivered, you know what I mean, by drone instantly. And I mean, you know, it's a business to where, you know what I mean, if you can actually get a piece of the pie, you might become rich, you know what I mean? Well, I think for that I'm delivery, right. though, you're going to need those big drones. Oh yeah, yeah, oh most definitely. I mean, we're you not know. talking about the Mavic Mini. I mean, come on, you, you come can't on, even... uh, you know, when the, the, Mav boat the Mavic, the Mavic Mini, you can deliver toilet paper, a pack yeah, of maybe a napkin. one little a, cho a, a chocolate bar, <laughs> hey, a pair of socks, a, pen. <laughs> <laughs> a pack of pens. Uh, you know what I if mean? If it's you not Wendy's. That wind will take that drone away. Yeah, you won't need the remote. Exactly. Hey, uh, Jordan Veteran, I gotta get my, I gotta get my extra room fixed up too, because I, I want to be able to have all my computer stuff and my drone stuff on one room only instead of having it, you know, everywhere. Rain, so let's see here. So, but yeah, going back to um. Going back to that, um, Jim Jones, it's just that, I mean, you know, 
can't this so are you like, thinking about getting I into uh, that business or, or what not necessarily i mean if i if i had that choice i probably would i mean it's gonna take some money to get to it and that's not money that i have you know what i mean available but um say for example if there's a business that actually opens like for example amazon amazon start doing that well and amazon's definitely going in that direction okay. and it so happened that i get my when when i i'm not saying it so happened when i get my uh part 107 they you know they need pilots you know what i mean and hey i could because they, they're even talking about that you could actually do it from your home kind of like you know working from home where the packages are sent you know brought to you and then from where you are you take it to where it need to go um but it's just that over the podcast they make it sound so easy but at the end of the day you have so many so many uh, uh working you know thin so many red tape and things you got to do before you could even set that up oh yeah i, oh, I don't yeah. think we just let you do it just like that because your name is jim no you gotta no. go red tape no, you're, you're, there's going to be so much liability and everything. You're going to have to have insurance. You're going to have to have lawyers. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you know, you're going you're gonna to have to have a drone, you know, like a $100,000 drone, something that's capable. Uh, you know, uh, the only way I can see them using guys like us, maybe for smaller type drones, uh, you know, to carry smaller packages, short distances would be, uh, that would be the only way to do it is, yeah. is for, for us, you know, uh, because unless you have, you know, that liability and uh, a drone that's capable of doing all that, um, I don't know, that's, I think there's a lot of money and, and, uh, paperwork involved to to be doing that correct hey hey yeah, liability is huge especially uh, property uh, damages and somebody wants to play be, with the yeah. drone yeah it would be huge hey, hey my kenny to answer your question i have seen plenty of videos with the femi x8se and man the quality is beautiful um jebra drone if i'm not mistaken you got a 2018 one right yeah, I got the first gen 2018. It's not bad. I sometimes I lose connection though with the RC if I'm in, a, you know, like within the city, around a lot of Wi Fi. But if I take it out to the country, it'll get good range. Okay, that's good to know, Robert Glazier. Um, oh wow, yeah, wow. recent recently I, just, I, I seen I seen some uh footage from that SC, that new one. And uh, it's amazing, uh, the quality. It's so close to uh, the DJI uh, cameras, it's unbelievable. I will say, Adrian, you'll like the controller on it because you can use that tablet in that controller. It opens up pretty wide compared to some of the other controllers. And yeah. it's I like the way it's real premium when you hold it in your hand. It's real premium the way it's built. So I think you'll like that drone when you when it arrives. I, I'm I'm thinking the same thing too. Um, the fact that I've seen so many videos about it and the drone looks phenomenal. One thing that actually also got me a little like what the hell is that the drone looks like it has obstacle avoidance in the front, but that's just decoration too. Yeah, it's just like the Xeno 2, all decorations. I mean, it, it literally looks like I have the little two eyes and then the little strip. And I'm like, well, that's cool, but yeah. this, it, this drone will actually help you a lot. The Xeno Pro will help you become a drone pilot because no sensors whatsoever. If you crash that sucker, you're going to crash. I mean, yeah. You're going to break something. Yeah, did I tell you that uh, Paradanafi is going to be a new drone out in the end of the month? No, I heard something about it, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, I saw somewhere, I Googled it, and it said June the 30th, they're supposed to have a, a pre-release for it. So, wait a minute, 
Wait well, to see you on it. What drone is it? Like what? what, what like what? What exactly is it going to do? Like what? Okay, what would be the difference between this new one compared to the older one they have? The older model is probably be probably just the range and then battery life. Uh, it uses the same controller as the uh, Skydio. That's because Skydio got it from them. Is that what it was? Okay. Yeah, that's what it was. That's kind of like with the whole argument with the Evos. They said that they got the design from DJI and then vice versa. I'm guessing with that lawsuit that they just settled on. Well, that lawsuit Evo there, uh, the big thing was about the propellers that DJI uh, has on all their drones, you know, the uh, quick release, you know, quick release. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's that's a big issue. Apparently, Evo um, had come up with that design originally. So, uh, you know, there was a lot of talk, you know, maybe it's going to do some major damage to DJI, but I, I don't think so. I mean, the worst case scenario is uh, DJI pays out some sort of royalty to uh, to Evo for for using that design. I yeah. mean, it's just, it's just a propeller, right? Yeah, well, one question about that, um, Jim's drone, and if I'm not mistaken, Evo and DJI are two Chinese drone companies. Right? I don't, I don't know that much about uh, Evo. So, I mean, I've, I've looked at their drones and uh, uh, it's very interesting how uh, if you take a look at the Evo in so many ways, it's a copy of the Mavic. You know, I, okay. as soon as I seen the first Evo come out and even the Evo too, it's, you know, it's, it's like a copy of the, uh, the Mavic. Like the, the Mavic 2 Pro or the Zoom, right? Well, the even the original Mavic. Yeah, the, the Pro, gotcha. You know, the, the Pro. Uh, the Evo, its design is, when they first come out with it, it looks just like a DJI drone. So, you know, I don't know, uh, I don't know why there wasn't any protection on uh, DJI's design um, because uh, Evo pretty much copied that. You know, they're all copying each other. Yep. Did, did you read that Jebra drone? Yeah, I'll get with Mike and um, maybe meet up with him and uh, Kuji. I'm on my phone. I can't really get much into the chat with this, but I'll get with him this week. Okay. That'll be cool. So, Jim Droning, talk to me. Have you been getting some good flying done? And another None. thing. Hold I on, haven't. Hold okay, go another, ahead. I'm sorry. Another question. Two-part question. I absolutely love your shout-out videos, the way you have that lady or the guy painting that thing, and then you show up, like you reveal the name of the people, the person you're giving a shout-out to. Thumbs up, and I love it. Oh, I love thanks. It. That's thanks. nice. That yeah, was nice. Hey, Jay Bergeron, if you ever get a chance to watch it, watch it. It's like, like, I don't even know how the hell he does it, but it just looks amazing. Like somebody about to paint a portrait, and then boom, here comes the name of the people that he gives a shout out to. Like the beginning to the end, beautiful. Love it. Well, I can tell you if you want to do the same thing, Adrian, there's uh, a company out there called Videos. I'm sure you've seen the advertisements on seen YouTube. The commercial on the advertisement, yes, I have. Videos. Well, go to videos and uh, open up an account with them. It's a one-time fee, and uh, there's just a multitude of of templates that uh, you can use to to do what I was doing, and that's what I've been using. Got you. Got you. But then again, I just, it, it just. It's cool. It, it, it's cool as shit. It really is. Like, yeah, when you do cool. that, like, either a female or a guy, like, you just paint a portrait and then boom, the name is revealed. Like, that. it's cool as hell. I, I love well, it. Well, to make things easy for myself, too, I mean, 
uh, I set up a basic template for the shout outs that I'm going to do. So I have that template already. So, so I have everything that I've saved myself as my own template. So then, for instance, if I did a shout out for you, then obviously I would go into videos and put your logo in whatever template I was using and then I would get it to render it and it downloads it and then all I do is take that uh, mp4 and drop it into the template I already have made just to make things a little bit easier because sometimes I might do you know five or six at a time so got you, got you. hey Robert uh, Robert yes, thank you for popping into the stream I really appreciate you Good evening, Adrian, my young brother. Nice to see you expanding your channel. Hey, man, thank you for the love and support. Really appreciate you. And I would actually like to have you in someday, Robert, if you could go ahead and pop in to the stream, come ahead and talk to us. Don't be shy. Don't be like J-Bro Drone. He was shy. Not no more. Now he's now he's a trooper. He's, he's not shy no more. I'm still shy. No, you're not. But when, you get on, when you got on with me, you weren't shy, not one bit. <laughs> but I haven't been able to answer in the first part of that question. I haven't really been able to get out and fly. Uh, whatever storm is there floating around, it looks like here in Canada, we're getting that tonight. Uh, it hasn't started raining yet, but the wind is picking up. I know here. Jim joining is every day rain. Well, we, we've had rain pretty much every day. I had a few breaks. I had a couple of days where I went down to the park. You've seen I was able to get out and, and get a bit of footage. Um, this week, I want to get out because I want to get some 360 with the uh, Mavic Pro. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Hey, Adrian, what kind of range do you get on your Mavic Air 1? That's a Wi-Fi drone, isn't it? Yes, yes. Um, I actually got several videos on my channel, Jebra Drone. If you want to go ahead and check them out. I've actually gotten pretty freaking far with that drone. I mean, it had a time that I think I took it, if I'm not mistaken, um, at least... I think it was 25,000 feet from takeoff point. Wow. But that was one of the videos where I actually had to make an uh, emergency landing about a mile and a half from my home because I completely run out of battery. Yeah. And, and then that's when I used to have the blue Nissan Titan before I got my Ram. And it was like a, like a little search and rescue, you know what I mean? But I... Right. By the road that it was in, it was like a straight shot from my house to go get it. That but, place you were at yesterday, that seemed like a nice place to fly. It's all open space. It is, except there's a lot of power poles, and there's also like a helicopter pad business somewhere around that area. So it mm. tells you, you know what I mean, that you can't really, no you know what I mean, go the car. exactly. Like yeah. when I was when I was aiming towards I-75. You seen all that interference that I was getting? Mm -hmm. That's the reason why, because it's literally somewhere around there for the hospital for uh, North Florida and Chand. You know what I mean? So you can't really fly that much. Yeah. So going towards the other side, I probably could, but I haven't tried it because if that son of a gun goes down in the water, I'm done. I can't retrieve it. That swamp is literally infested with gators. I'm not going in there to go get no damn drone. Yeah. Ain't no way. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. Well, I with the Mavic Air, I never take it that far away. I mean, it's a, it's a Wi-Fi drone, and it's perfect for staying close. I think the farthest I ever went was thirteen hundred and sixty-five meters, and uh, she was breaking up a little bit even at that. So, I mean, it's it's a cool drone. It's a fast drone, and uh, I think the Mavic Air is great for just keeping it close by and and getting footage of whatever's in your general area. It's and uh, I I also like it because it's small. And if you go into a park and there's people around, 
they think I'm playing with a toy. So, right. and we got yeah, it's very inconspicuous, almost we, like a Mavic Mini. Yeah, right. we got we got the prick, the goat, the jackass, my boy, the asshole. He's about to come in, Mister Dan, aka the joining veteran. Hey, I know he was up to something. I knew he was up to something. I knew it. All hey, he was doing. Hey Dan, by the way, look here, man. I need you to do the parody. Anything I can do, man, let me know. I need you to do it. I think That's you have. A, I think you have everybody's support to go ahead and do it. There's a. All right, so I, I'm not. I'm not going to go too into this, man. Um, I'm going to ask that everybody respects my opinion on this, if that's cool. Uh, we had a talk, right? Okay. A few of us got together, and um, let's just say there were some serious repercussions on someone's end. Uh, I think a lesson was learned. Um because if you checked out Dobo's Twitter feed, he swore he wasn't going to apologize. That's that's where I'm going to end that, okay? We did get an apology. Whether he was being disingenuous or it was heartfelt, I'm not going to even go into that. Okay, gotcha. What I am going to say is somebody paid some serious consequences across the board for what took place there, okay? And I'm not going to throw all that out there on the table. I'm just going to say that a lesson was learned and moving forward. I think he has a very good idea of where we all stand. I don't think it's necessary or good for me to do that. If you catch my drift. Yes. There was a lot that transpired in 24 hours after all that took place. Now, nothing negative on my end, but somebody definitely did pay some consequences there. Um, he would not have done that if something serious didn't happen. Let's just put it that way. A company that large doesn't apologize unless there was some serious stuff that took place. You get where I'm going? Yes. So I'm I don't much, what, what are you guys talking about? Just a brief. You don't have to go into it too much. but Well, if you don't mind, Dan, I, do you mind if I just give him a little? Okay. Pretty, it, much, pretty much is that um, I don't know if you heard of Drone University or Drone U. You know, uh, I've heard of it before, okay. yeah. There, there was a video that they went ahead and pulled out to where they trying to just they trying to take a crap on him on all of us pretty much. Because okay. you know you know, so basically, you know, some people just did not like you know what they said. And you know, if you ever follow original uh, Dobo, he went off on them, you know what I mean? Okay. So just basically it's a words war, I guess, back and yeah, forth. Yeah, I mean, he had the right to do it, and then my boy Dan also kind of went up a little bit. But then mm -hmm. again, I mean, you know, he did put a video saying that he was not going to apologize, but now obviously he did, if I understood you correctly, Dan. So maybe so, that, you know, go ahead. I, 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 as much as I would like to say everything that unfolded, it would be unfair of me to do that after our discussions. What I will say is, is this, just so you guys have an idea. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, let's see if I can clear this up just a tad. You guys see that at all now? Not Not really. Really. Okay, that was a post from Drone You. I'll just read it to you. This was a tweet that was dropped on Dobo saying, it says, we will not apologize for setting and holding a higher standard of drone pilots. We are pilots. We are ultimately responsible. If that is difficult to understand, you probably shouldn't be a pilot. Hashtag Drone You. Hashtag drone pilots, hashtag leader in the industry. That says everything right there that's wrong with how they did it. Okay. It 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 just goes to show that they think they're better than everybody else. And I, I think the whole apology was lost on Paul. I don't think Paul understood what he was really apologizing for. Okay. There, granted, there were a lot of people upset about the drone policing thing. But at the same time, he took a swipe at the YouTubers that feed him, right? Without us talking about the tech and showing the capabilities of these drones, he wouldn't even have the pilots that are interested in doing his university if it wasn't for us. So when you when you overstep and you say some of the stuff that he said, I, I listen, I, I have a copy of all of it. You can even go to their podcast. It's It's a lot better to watch the visual of how he was saying it 
So you can see the arrogance level that he had when it was going down. And it was very frustrating to sit through that, to have somebody scoff off the last five years that I've put into my, my YouTube channel and the hundreds of thousands of hours I've invested into where I am today based on the, my own empire that I've built for myself in this, in this platform, right? To have some drone company come along and say that we're not shit. We're all clickbaiters, we're all hype train riders, and we're all doing it for personal gain and views. That's a big no-no. You don't do that. You don't call out the entire drone industry because you have FAA connections. He thought he was invincible and untouchable because he's friends with FAA people. That was mm -hmm. the biggest mistake he possibly could have made because not everybody was mad for that reason. Okay, maybe 50% were mad about the drone policing and 50% were mad because you talked crap about the YouTubers that are putting essentially uh, food on your table for you and assisting you with that. Um, <clears throat> I, I, don't, I don't know if they took it down. Uh, I don't think he took it down. What I think happened is he dropped two more videos on top of it so it would disappear really quickly and nobody would notice it. If you notice, he put out three videos in one day. So... If you go to his page right now, and if he did take it down, then I'm really going to be a little uptight. No, it's still up. Drawing you apology and drone police. He's, he's still got it posted there. It's the How many subscribers does that channel have? Is it in so, the millions? Or? No, no. He's only got 44,000. He's got a very small watch base. He went, oh, against, yeah. he went against YouTubers, like just one YouTuber with a smaller subscriber base but a bigger outreach was able to do a serious amount of damage to him and how he does things in his business proceeding forward. He was not being proactively thinking when he was talking, and that is a big no-no when you own a business. You have to remember that there are a lot of people involved in this hobby. You can't mm -hmm. just start shooting people down left and right because you don't agree with uh, a YouTuber maybe doing a range test or something of that nature, but to, to majority and, and generalize the entire right drone community of youtubers and say that we're all this is not the way that you go about it that is how you tank a youtube channel and get people mad at you really quickly yeah so, word of mouth is huge it'll get yeah. around quickly so i mean in, in in all honesty he's really lucky only two of us made a video right it could have gotten way worse it could have gotten seriously bad for him if let's say 25 40 50 people made a video now, whenever people type in drone you, they're going to get all of that mixed in with the category of the stuff that they do. And people are going to see that. And pretty soon, man, your name's going to be kiboshed really quickly. So you know what I mean? So you got to be really careful when you're doing streams. And that's why when I come on here, I, I try to be open with you guys. I try to be as forthcoming as I can. And I try to be as honest as possible. Right? If, I, if I'm not mistaken, um, then I believe that also Ken Heron also got involved in it, right? I, I, I haven't watched his video. I only watched yours and original double. I never watched what Ken Heron said. I, I don't think I don't think Ken got involved. I could be wrong. I don't think Ken got involved in it. Um, I know Kelly from Ready Set Drone commented on Dobo stuff. A lot of the bigger channels came in and commented on Dobo stuff and said they agree. So when you take the top tier YouTubers in this field and industry uh, that say you're wrong, you probably made a mistake. And it's time to apologize for that mistake. And they did. Whether it was disingenuous or heartfelt, I don't think it matters at this point. The fact is it happened. They did it. And there were some serious repercussions for their actions. So I don't think it's necessary to push forward. I think if it goes beyond that point, it will go legal. And I don't think anybody needs that. So I think we're done. We called it. Right? Got you. Everyone's looking at me like, uh. I was actually reading what Drones Are Us actually said, and I just want to welcome. Thank you so much for popping into the stream. I appreciate you. We're just kind of reading what the person was saying. Oh, yeah. uh, sorry. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, real quick. Jim, you're, you're right. They did remove the video. However, the podcast is still available. The audio is available. So you can still listen to it if you want to. Um, you know, man, I hope moving forward, Paul makes better decisions. That's that's all. I really hope that he learns something from this and he walks away having gained knowledge. You know, that's that's the main key here. Well, I think the damage has already been done. It's uh, done. That, yeah. You know, I mean, it is like a lot of celebrities will just do some bullshit and then come out and put on like a little 
itty bitty apology that the, the big time, you know what I mean, producers kind of put up with, you already did it, you already opened your mouth, it's done. People are not gonna see you the same anymore. People must still like your movies or they must still like join you for what they do. But now the fan base is probably never gonna be the same because the people that follow them also love drones. So you know what I mean? Um, I think he's lost a lot of credibility and it's gonna be really hard to gain that credibility back at this point. Um, you know, especially from people like me, who, like I said, have invested and, and a lot of you guys. Adrian, I'm not just talking about me. I'm looking at this as a, as a broad range of people, right? It's not just about me and the time I put in. It's about you guys as well and the time you put into your of channels. Yes. It wasn't just directed at me. It was directed at all of us that are involved. Community, in that. Yeah. Right. So, you know, that's that's the standpoint I'm heading it from. Everybody wanted me to go after them for the drone policing thing. And honestly, you can't because there's always going to be drone police out there. You know, whether it's him turning somebody in or somebody else, it's going to happen regardless of how you look at it. They do run a school. The idea of their school is to be as legal as possible. I understand that, so I'm not going to yell at them for that. What I am going to yell at them for is the problem at hand, and that's that you went after all the YouTubers that are putting food in your mouth. That's an issue. That had to be addressed, so we did. All right. And by the way, Mike Kenny, uh, thank you for watching that video of my VGI Mavic Air 1, my little uh, mission, search and rescue. Anyway, what's going on, Lon, Denard? How you doing, man? Thank you for popping into the stream. I really appreciate you. In flying RC airplanes over 15 years, no problem. All of a sudden, drones come out and educate people. By then, and we have a pandemic. Yeah, I understand drones are us. I hear you, man. Gary, Brown Ariel, how you doing, man? Thank you for popping into the stream. I really appreciate you. And hey, um, just like Gary Brown ever just said, Dan, um, I don't need to say more. You know what I mean? No, it's 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 like I said, it's done. I don't I, honestly, I don't even want to keep really talking about it, man. Because like I said, we've kind of ended this. I knew I was going to have to discuss some of this with people when it comes up, but I want to just tread lightly here. If you catch my drift, man. Yes, I definitely so, do. Okay. Well, I watched I watched drone you a couple of times, but. I, I never really uh, got into that channel. I mean, uh, I fly drones just like you guys. So most of my time is spent watching the guys who are flying drones. That's that's where my that's where all my time is spent. Yeah. Uh, Metro drone. So, Metro, uh, what's up, man? I'm not I'm not really sure what Drone News channel is about, uh, other than news articles that I've seen on there. They, they honestly, they do the side of it that none of us really want to do. They do the side of the drone world that a lot of people don't even like to touch on for reasons like this. It does cause a lot of controversy, but the controversy was created because somebody overstepped their mouth a little bit and their skill set and didn't realize what they were doing at the time that it was happening. Or maybe they did, they just thought they were above everybody else, and that's a problem. They talk about the legal side of what drones are, whereas the rest of us make content based on, you know, technology, showing drones, capabilities, reviews, stuff like that. We are the reason why people purchase these products. They are the reason why people go to drone school and become legal. So two two very different sides to the spectrum, you know. Yep. Well, I mean, I'm I'm flying legal. You know, I'm a, I'm a drone pilot. I have a certificate. I'm in Canada. You know, the laws are a little bit different, more relaxed than uh, the states. But at the same time, in general, I mean, I'm I'm going to fly the way I'm supposed to fly. I mean, uh, uh, we're only supposed to go 500 meters. Yes, I've gone 1,600 meters. Uh, you know, if I'm in a, a location and it's open space, I'm not going to, if I do crash, I'm not going to hurt anything, then yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I don't really look at it as I'm uh, breaking the law. You so know? here's my perspective on that. There's BL, BLOVS, right, and BLOS, right? So you got beyond visual line of sight, visual line of sight, right? The, the, the FAA is not going to come after you if you go out in the middle of a cornfield, nowhere, and you fly out two miles. They have no reason to come after you. Now, if you try to do that crazy crap inner city, they're going to have a problem with it. Somebody's yeah, going to turn you in. 
it's like D Dustin Danil. Yes, he does his range videos. Mm -hmm. He goes on the top of a freaking mountain and he flies way out over the water or stuff like that. Exactly. He's not. He's not doing these things in inner city. If you're intentionally putting yourself in a in a position where you're going to have the FAA go, well, there was lots of room for failure here and injury. Uh, then you're asking for it. But if yeah. you know, if you go out into the middle of freaking nowhere with no interference and there's nothing to bother you and you can fly at a low altitude for a long distance i will almost make you a bet that the faa is not going to mess with you just fly with yeah, i agree i i believe most of these laws there they're guidelines they're guidelines you have to use common sense right because safety is what it's all about you know <laughs> mike mike's mike's being a real Go go get her guy tonight, man. <laughs> he, he is. He, he's on fire. He's on fire. Mike's awesome, man. Yeah, you'll see me when I do a range test. I fly like way out in the middle of the country or over water, like in the middle of nowhere. Like if it goes down, what, what's it going to affect? It goes into the water. Yeah. You know? Exactly. It's not like it's going to hit some hobo on a boat hanging out in the middle of the ocean. Well, it might. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. There's a little cardboard raft out there. <laughs> Dunk. Uh. <laughs> you know, this, the story is probably not going to be a drone falling. He's going to probably come back with the story of the sky's falling. <laughs> this is cruising along in my box. By the, by the way, Dan, to kind of change yeah. gears a little bit, how's the recovery coming along, man? Um, well, if you see me moving around a lot in this chair, it's because it hurts. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I look uncomfortable a lot when I sit in chairs, so uh, I can do it for a short period of time. When, you know, when things start hurting, I got to go lay down. Uh, they just took the drain out, so now I'm recovering from the drain hole being removed. Um, yeah, man, it's rough, dude. Don't ever get a hernia. <laughs> and don't, don't let them botch the surgery on the hernia. So. Might kill Brian Shrimp, <laughs> Great Salt Lake. Well, this is true, man. Shrimp lives matter, I guess. <laughs> lives matter. Oh, no, you did not. <laughs> Come on. Uh, all lives matter, man. I'm sick of this. Just yeah, like, pretty much. It, it's, it's really, honestly, man, Look I don't want to just hit it's it. just the media. Out. The media tries to turn people on each other. I hate yeah, that. But, but hey, see, yeah. Look at the hat. No sticker. No stick of what I'm saying. Oh, oh, for the bill too. I'm sure you understand what the heart says, right? I'm uh, sure yep. you did. Oh, my lives. camera just went totally out of focus. That for the police, yeah. Adrian? The All right, I got you. I got you. Hold it's on. got a little blue you. ribbon in it. you damn right. Yeah, I see. That's cool. nice. Cool. you damn right. You know they're talking about defunding the police. Some of these uh, cities are. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, they, um, they call themselves being mad at uh, uh, Andrew Cuomo and Bill de Blasio in New York because they um they, they don't want to um defund it. They're like, no, we're not going to. And the thing is that there's so many idiots. I see that. I, I like the hat, though. Star Wars. It's cool. But it, I'm, not, I'm, still, I'm, I'm still not a Star Wars fan, but I like the hat. I think Star Wars sucks. <laughs> What? Funny, Adrian. <laughs> Ruining my childhood right now, bro. What are you talking about, man? Hey, Star Wars is the best. Dude. You know, I actually looked this up the other day. I was uh, I was uh, looking up the top 100 movies of all time, and Star Wars made number 27. What's interesting about that is the top-rated villain of all time voted by the world is Darth Vader. That's how you know that dude is like a douche dick to, to earn that title out of all the movies that have ever been made he is the one everybody chose as being the biggest douche ever well, and he is he is man but in the end he brings balance to the force so it's all yeah good. he's cool though you know ben, I'm your <laughs> father. i hate that goddamn noise it, it, it bro i stand it you're crazy man i stand it i think it's a dumb movie Every single one of them. Come on, oh, dude. No, it can't be that dumb if it's made it to the top 100 best movies of all time. <laughs> I, man, look, 
every that. single no hold on hold on but every single one of them that I try to watch that oh Jim left any every single one of them I try to watch it I swear to God I try so hard but then I end up renting the stupid movie and losing <laughs> money on it and just taking it by the same day I never finished no. So no. is there any new Star Wars movies coming out? Or how about, I don't no, follow Star Wars. We're talking not, about not Star Wars. Oh, <laughs> shit. Go ahead, sir. No, no, it's all good, man. Uh, you know, bro, I, I talked to my mom, right? First Star Wars movie came out in 1977. I talked to my mom, and she said, uh, you know, I've been to a lot of movies in my life. And I said, I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. And uh, she goes, you know, we went and saw Star Wars in theaters, uh, you know, when it first came out. I was actually in first stages of college, and I was like, that's cool. She said that she had never been to a movie where at the end of the movie, everybody stood up and clapped when the good guys won. That was the first time in history she's ever been to a movie where that happened. So that just tells you right there that the writing and the storyline must have just been phenomenal in 1977. That movie probably blew people's minds. That would be like taking Transformers today and going mm -hmm. back to 1930 and showing Transformers. People's faces would just melt off. They wouldn't even know how to take it. You know what I'm saying? That's probably what Star Wars did in 1977 for people. So I don't know, man. There's there's a whole side to it. As it, when I was a kid, it took me away from my from my worldly perspectives, man. You know, as as a kid, it took me on a space adventure. I just was blown away by, you know. And and even as an adult now, going into my you know I'm 33 now, dude, I still find those movies amazing today. Now, were so, when you were a kid, do you dress up for Halloween, Star Wars costumes, yeah, right? Dude. That stuff. Chewbacca going around trying to pull people's arms off. And, and all that stuff, too. Bro, yeah, I was in it yeah. and to win it, bro. Definitely. So. Stupid movie, still, anyway. Hey, Duh. Ron. <laughs> and Jim. I don't know what yeah, happened. Cool house, I got cut off. What happened? What happened, uh, Jim? I got cut off. I don't know what happened. I think I, I moved the tablet the wrong way. Probably I moved the tablet and I got cut up. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, um, Ron. Yes. Talk to me, man. Have you been able to get some flying done out there? I actually went out today um, and uh, put the uh, Mavic 2 Pro to a little wind test. <laughs> okay. That wind Did was screaming out there today. Yeah. Did you put it yet? Did I do what? Did you post the video? Because I never got the notification for no, it. No, no, I didn't. I just went up and there's a lot of times, you know, I, like I said, I'm stuck up here um, till uh, Friday morning. And my last shift was actually Monday, day and night. I did a 24. Schedule got screwed up, but I've been sitting here for two days with nothing to do. So I, I brought my drone cameras with me. And so I just went out and flew today, did some practicing. I practice all the time. Sometimes I don't even turn the camera on. I just practice with the sticks, flying, do manual orbits, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't, didn't even film anything. So, but yeah, the wind was, uh, it was 20 plus knots today. But the old Mavic 2 Pro, man, held right in there. I mean, that thing is a beast. Like on my Zoom, I let it, I mean, that thing is steady. It moves yeah. around, but when it comes to the camera, like you could, you could barely see. You know what I mean? Moving, barely mm -hmm. see it. I As know. I always say, the Mavic Two is the Cadillac of all these drones. You know, the one that really mm -hmm. held up well was, but you had to be careful with that, depending on how high your winds were. Was the Phantom series? Um, when I was in Maui the one time, I was in probably forty plus knot winds, and I chanced it. I decided, oh, let me try it. Well, I crashed it before it left the ground. Oh, my God. Wind caught the – as soon as I turned the blades on, wind caught it, tipped over. So, oh, shit. Yeah. Thank God I brought extra blades. But Yeah. Getting ready to sell the Mini, man. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's unfortunate. You just got it. I've right. had it for four, four months now, man, and um, I've reached out to DJI six times now and no response on this overheating issue. 
I'm getting that video I made about two weeks ago with Mavic Mini overheating. That was only in like 84 degree weather. It's supposed to be able to handle up to like 102 or 104 degrees and it can't. It just can't. Um, I get outside in any kind of hot weather now. And, you know, even if it's only on for a minute before I try to take off, as soon as I take off, it says units overheating and then I have to land on a cool day. It's fine. Um, and I've gotten a lot of comments on that video now of other people having this problem and they're all in hot areas. This is, this is disappointing to me that DJI has a product that they're not willing to answer for. Now, has it always done that on you or is it just uh, with no, a new it, update? Didn't, no, no. Didn't start until it got hot out. I've had the oh, update okay. for a while. As soon as it got hot out here in Florida, cause before it was all 70 degree days. 70, mm -hmm. 70, 70, 70. Then we got into the 80s, and as soon as we hit the 80s, it started having all sorts of overheating problems. So I don't know, man. It doesn't – I can't – it's a useless to me if I can't fly it during the summer. Like that's when you're going to get the best footage. That's when you're going to be able to accomplish the coolest things. That's Everything's green. I mean, it's like it, it makes Sorry. it pointless, useless to me. I can't do anything with it. you know. And, I, and if I go to sell it to somebody now, I have to be honest about that too. Look, man, got to wait for cooler days. Sorry. You know, yeah, works. Um, I haven't, I think it's been a, about at least a good month and a half that I haven't flew my um Mavic Mini. I need to take it out <coughs> with the pad and see if I'm having the same problem too. I um, no on it too. That drone would be useless to me because I'm oh. always got high winds out here. It's no, no, it, it's very capable, man. I, I don't care what anybody says. People lose it because it gets up there and then they hit return to home and while it's returning to home, the wind picks up and it turns off return to home and it starts to blow away and then they panic. Instead of just putting it in sport mode and looking where their line is to follow it back, they just let it drift away while they panic. If you put it in sport mode, man, it'll fight the same way. It's going to go 27, 30 miles an hour into the wind. You know, yeah. It may only cruise at 12 miles an hour in sport mode, but it's not going to blow away. Just choose your trajectory line and start riding that line back. If you get close enough and the wind warnings go away, you can reactivate and return to home if you're that panicked about it. But, you know, it's seems, a, what's that? I was out with a Mavic Pro a couple of weeks ago, and on the way out, I was doing like 48, and I was doing like seven on the way yep. back. On the way back, yep. <laughs> but you, you, would, you would really be surprised at what it can actually handle. I've had it out on some very windy days. Like the day I went out with the original Dobo out on the water, it was gusting out there at 25, 30 miles an hour around the boat, and it handled it like a champ. Never had an issue. I was able to fly right back to myself, grab it, turn it sideways. I mean, it, it, so it's not that it can't handle wind. It's when you get up high altitude. That's when you're going to run into those problems because, you know, your ground wind is way lower than your, than your, you know, wind when you're up at 100 feet, 200 feet. All of a sudden, it doubles the wind factor up there, you know, so – you start what's blowing on the ground at 25. You get up there now; it's like 37, 40 mile an hour gusts. Mm. You know, so I mean, you're you're you guys have uh, a, uh, UAV forecast, right? Yep. Yes. Have you guys tampered with the wind settings yet to see what it does? Uh, a little it. bit. If you get into uh, the app UAV for, I'm going to keep saying it in case people are in chat and they don't know about it. <laughs> Um, if you keep tampering with it, when you go into UAV forecast, if you go down to where it says wind, all right, let's see here. It says, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it says wind over there in the corner, seven miles per hour. Yeah. If you click on the wind thing, it lets you set your altitude for wind, and then it tells you what the wind is at altitude. So if you know you're going to be flying up at 100 feet and you set it for this, it'll tell you it's not good to fly at that altitude because the wind is higher and gives you the wind factor. I mean... So Tampa, I think Tampa is the one that updates our area for this. I don't know where it's coming from, where they get their information, but I'm sure it's somewhere local. Um, but, you know, a lot of the stuff downtown will give me a lot higher wind warning. So I think it's accurate. I, I assume it's accurate. I'm not just guessing here. I assume there's some database this is pulling from. But if you haven't tried it, try it for your area and tell me what you think. It's, it's really worked out great so far it's never misled me so i have to assume it's accurate you know so you, you you're basically going to get rid of it because it's overheating in the, when it's hot or are you having any other issues then no so it's overheating when it's hot but look at it's not even our summer season yet dude we're just now getting into the 90s we haven't even peaked at the 100 yet if every time i take it outside it's going to like overheat and just automatically land it's useless to me i can't do anything with it 
you know? Just sitting on the shelf now collecting dust. The Hubson Zeno will go up before that will. You know? That's that's sad to me that that's the case. We're talking about DJI versus, like, bottom-of-the-barrel drone company, Hubson. Now, you got a Zeno 1? Uh-huh. You fly a Zeno 1 or you got the new 2? No, I got the Zeno 1. I only got three GPS birds left, man. Just the Mavic Mini, the Zeno, and the and the Bebop 2, which I'll never part ways with. <clears throat> I mean, you know, I'm getting used to the Zeno. I hate it because it doesn't hold a, a straight track line. It always wants to cattywampus walk left or right. But no, oh, yeah, and the Zeno drop and all that yep. toilet bowl. Yep. I've never had toilet bowl, um, but you like ever I update said, yours or did you keep it as oh, same? Yeah. I did the update right after I got it. I read everybody that was saying the best ones to mishmash the uh, firmware with, and uh, yeah. it works great. You know, uh, there are problems. Like if you set it to 4K and you're flying recording in 4K, then your screen resolution dumps. Like mm -hmm. it'll automatically go back to really chalky pixelated footage that you're seeing. If you set it at 1080 at 30 or 1080 at 60, then it gives you like 720 viewing on the screen. If right. you go anything higher than seven, than 1080 at 30 or 60, if you go up to 2.7K or 4K at 30 while you're recording, then it dumps your, your Wi-Fi footage coming back to, like, just crap. You can barely see what's happening on the ground. Like, it's just there's, – there's a lot to be desired about it, honestly. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's an interesting drone. <laughs> That's Hubson. What did I expect, man? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm actually satisfied with my Hubson Xeno Pro. Pro had a few upgrades to it versus the, the one. I, I, that's actually what I need to talk to you later on about that because I'm having difficulty done, uh, updating the down firmware. Because uh, on my Mac computer, I'm not able to do it, period. It's not compatible. So I have uh, to use a PC. And I don't have a PC. And Ron lives too far to let me borrow his PC. He lives in freaking North Korea, China or North Korea somewhere out there. How about you ship me the computer, Dan? <laughs> Ron, I mean, I'll ship it back to you when I feel like it. How about you do that? Yeah. <laughs> um, How many drones do you have, Adrian? I got six. Six? Jesus. Is that about, all? about to be seven in, uh, in a few it? weeks. Is that it, Adrian? Yeah, for now. <laughs> I remember when I first when I got my first drone, which was the Mavic Air One. I'm not gonna buy another one. Then I got the Spark. I'm not gonna buy another one. Then I got the Mavic Two Zoom. I'm not gonna buy another one. Then I just kept going and going and going and going. They have a twelve yeah. step program. What was that? <laughs> so they have a twelve step program. <laughs> I guess so. I know. Right. I'm I'm in it. I have too many drones. Yeah. So here's what I'm gonna do, man. I'm gonna send you this Fujitsu laptop. It's yours, okay? Um, get with me, man. Give me your address. I actually just redid the entire machine. It's got Windows 10 now. It's one of those flip around, do a hickey things with a touch screen, so it turns into like a phablet and a whatever else. Um, but I just put Windows 10 on it, man. It's ready to roll. Uh, it just needs a new owner. Just give me your address, brother. I'll send it to you. And you can do whatever you want with it. How's that for a deal? That sounds good to me. Thank you. I appreciate you. Hey, okay. that's pretty nice, Dan. That's pretty nice. Got to really keep nice. things moving, man. People do it for me all the time. Anytime I have an issue, somebody's always stepping up to the plate. So you can always return the favor, man. You so see, pay Ron, it forward. Pay it forward to you. Know, I don't even need you no more. Never mind. <laughs> You're useless. Never mind. Well, I think that's cool, Dan. That's cool. Appreciate you, Don. Thank you, man. Got it, bro. Hey, 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 Ron, what are you doing? Are we just you don't need me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, just joking. Don't leave yet. Actually, I can't so, stay too long. Um, yeah, I gotta go. Okay. Thank you for go popping ahead. in. Go grab a quick bite to eat and then get to bed up early tomorrow morning. So you've been working hard lately, um, Ron, like things been picking up? Yeah, it's actually been doubling lately. Um, sad part is, you know, I, I was in Minneapolis the other day, and some of the streets there, on one street in particular, looked like 
you were downtown Beirut after a terrorist attack. Mm. It was terrible. Yeah. Oh, have, have you guys been busy with all this um, BS going on with the riots and you know maybe picking up people or police and stuff like that? You know, actually, we haven't had anything like that. And then we are actually um, not permitted. The company wouldn't allow us to go into Minneapolis um, for about a week till things settle down. Um, but we're we're kind of um, we're kind of back up and running, pretty much business as normal lately. Okay. Um, and. Uh, I don't think I don't know, get me started on the COVID thing, but I really, yeah, I honestly, I personally have not personally transported one. Not one. Not my, one. Oops, sorry. My full time and part time job. Hmm. At potentials, but nobody tested positive. Okay. <clears throat> And with all those protests going on, you would think, you know, the virus going around, a lot more people will be getting that the next week or two. Yeah. Hey, none yeah. of them had masks on from what I could see on TV. Not even the law enforcement. They didn't wear masks. Well, I know here here in Canada, there is a ton of people walking around, and they don't even believe this is really happening anyway. Yeah. You know, it, it's unbelievable. I, I've seen it right from the start. Uh, they're just, they don't believe it's happening. No mask, no nothing. They're not taking any precautions. They're just going about every day like it's normal. It's That's going to come back too in the fall time from what I've heard. Uh, yeah, it will. Give me, give me one sec guys. Sorry. I just got to address something in the comments here. If That's cool. Um, Hey, Hey Mike, Kenny, be careful messing with Chris. Okay. QC guy has a really bad history of doing crazy things and and just be careful messing with him. Don't be watch how close you get to to Chris. Okay? I promise you, man, he is a backstabber really quickly. So just be careful how much you reach out and communicate with him. If you're doing something cuz you want to do it, that's fine. Just be careful, okay? I have known that guy for 5 years. Be careful messing with him, all right? Don't get too close. I promise you. Sorry, guys. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I've had a run-in with him. Yeah, he's an interesting fellow. Man. He's very vindictive if you get he on is. his bad side. So he, he went after Bill, the drone reviewer. Well, so did I did. for very different reasons. But, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, be, be very careful messing with the QC guy. Who is it, Dan? Yeah, uh, who is it? Chris, the QC guy on YouTube. Never heard of him. Yeah, he's a, he's a real Hitler-based uh, Nazi of a guy. So just oh, He also, he, did you see his range there. video? He What's that? About, have you seen his uh, range video he had with the Mavic Air 2? No. Yeah. You talk about drone police, man. He went out, like, I think 30,000 feet with that thing. It's crazy. But my I understand to this day, I, I've yet to understand what is so important about a range test. Is it a beat your chest thing? No. Yeah, I don't get it either, Ron. Okay, so I, I will weigh in on this. Um, Go ahead. It's, it's nice to know the exact abilities of your platform in case you ever had to use it for that reason. So no. think about it this way. Everybody's going to get a different range based on where they're at. Some people live inner city. Some people live out the, outside the city. It's really hard to establish what the capabilities of your drone are. Let's say a natural disaster hits and you want to sign yourself up to assist in search and rescue. And you have no idea what your drone's capabilities are. You see what I'm saying? So if this happens, this gives you the ability to say, hey, I know I have at least a two mile range capability to assist these guys. I can do that. You know, there's, there's, I'm sure if I sat down and came up with a bunch of reasons I could offer them to you, but there are plenty in my mind good enough to be able to solve problems if you had to for the right reasons. So just to know that your drone can do it in your area is good enough for me. 
you only have to do it once, just as an idea. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like a jet ski. You don't always ride your jet ski at top speed. Some people do. You don't, it's like a car. You wouldn't get in your car and go 150 miles an hour all the time because it says it can do 150, do you? I mean, no, because yeah. it would destroy your car really quickly. Like it's something have, you just do on like every once in a while, feed a little speed to your ride. You I know, don't have but to say more. Dan pretty much just hit the nail on the head. Thank you, Dan. That? Yeah. I was I was gonna say pretty much the same thing, maybe not exactly word for word, but <laughs> kind of you know, same thing pretty much. But I think I think it's good to know the limitations of your platform. You know, everybody's you know, gonna get a different result. So you know, it's it's weird, it all depends on where you're at. I mean, I come outside of my house. I can go a couple miles if I yeah. want to. Down to the right, to the left, same terrain. Yeah. Go to the left, I can go a quarter mile and a damn thing loses the signal. Yep. So, and I don't know why. There's not power lines. There's not tall trees. But what is it that, you know? So the idea is to find your average out point. You know what I'm saying? Where do you normally average? I can guarantee myself I can normally get this. Like this is an average 75% or better chance I can do this. You know, to do that, you have to do it a couple of times, figure out what the limitations of the product are. So, Thank good you for thought, man. Doing a veteran. Appreciate you. Well, Adrian, I'm going to cut it short myself because that's about the time I'll be getting up between 4 and 4.30. So yeah, uh, just popped in to say hi, buddy. Thank you, man. I really appreciate you. And I will see you Friday. Uh, Friday, yes. I hope so. Okay. All, right, yeah. all right. All right. Well, I'm, I'm also going to go ahead and call it a night, too. It's about to be two hours. That's supposed yeah, to be two hours. But every time it goes over, I mean, no complaints. But anyway, thank you to everybody that popped into the chat. I really appreciate you. Dan, I'm going to go ahead and get with you. Thank Adra. you. For doing that, thank you, man. I wasn't expecting you to even do that, man. I appreciate yeah, man. it on the heart. Hey, look, thank you. Somebody, somebody donated this laptop to me. It gave me a chance to fix my other one. I have no need for it. It can go to somebody that needs it. So, yeah. all good. Well, Jay Bird, Dan, Jim, good and seeing you, Ron, and the legend Adrian. <clears throat> well, have a good night. All right, guys, take care, yeah. everybody. All right, man. See you later. Yeah, Metro Drone, thank you, man. HVEE4, -E thank you, man. Appreciate you. I believe that's Lee. Yeah, Mr. Lee, thank you, man, for popping in. Anyway, I'm about to go ahead and call it a night, too, fellas. Thank All right, so thanks much. again, Adrian. Hey, good time. You too, Joe. Go okay, ahead. You, Jay Bird. What's that? I said, see you later, Jay Bird. All right, see you later. Have a good night, everybody. Hey, you too. Thank you, Jim Santiago. Yeah. Thank you, Curtis. Hey, Jim, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to buy that uh, that thing that you're talking about, the v videos or whatever it is. Yeah, videos. V-I-D-D-Y-O-Z-E. Yeah, -D -D yeah Z-E, got you, got you. Uh, got you. I think it's it was close to 100 bucks Canadian, I think, so... I mean, American money is probably a little bit cheaper. Um, I, I, if I read, if I actually, because I remember seeing the um, the little ad on YouTube, and I think it's sixty-seven dollars US for me. Yeah, so I mean, it's for you, it's it's cheaper because I mean, Canadian money is like one and a half times the American money, right? But yeah. I I love that program, and it's a lifetime thing, and it's just full of a ton of stuff. And uh, so whatever basic animation they have, you will go into their program. It's online. Um, you'll do the animation and then it'll then you'll download it and then you can just save that file in in whatever folder you have for all your uh, videos. You can't you can't actually download a program and make it. You yeah. would take everything online in their program and then download it to your computer. Gotcha. Right. But but I love it. There's there's so many options for uh, animations and stuff that you can do even for your intro channel, uh, you know, your ending part of your channel. Uh, I hope you get it. You'll love it. You'll love it. I 
Got you. All right, Jim. Thanks again for popping in, man. I really appreciate you, boss. Okay, Adrian. I got to go to bed. I got to get up at 5, 2. I don't know what time it is there. It's 11 p.m. here. It's 11 p.m. also here, and I have to get up at 5 myself. Yeah. Okay. So we better get to bed. Yes, sir. I'll see you later, man. Okay. All right. Good night. Thank you, sir. Okay. I want to say thank you to everybody. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for popping into the stream. Good stream. Make sure you hit that bell. I'm sorry. Make sure you hit that thumbs up bell. Damn it. Make sure you hit that thumbs up for the stream. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. I will see you guys later. Good night. God bless.